Hello everyone. I am Sachindra and I welcome you to this session of Kickstarting Your Image Processing Adventures. I am a speaker, trainer and a tech enthusiast who likes to learn and practice new ideas over the cutting edge technologies. I have hosted several sessions on software development, IoT and computer vision to students and professionals and help them deploy some applications to solve real world challenges. In this session, we'll learn about how to start with computer vision, what kind of libraries or APIs to begin with, and which solutions are better fitting for solving a particular problem, whether it be barcode recognition, face detection, or understanding a histogram, pixel density in an image. So let's begin with that. So we'll start with introduction. So image processing has been gaining a lot of attention these days. We have seen multiple companies investing in, uh, in investing a lot of time and money into the projects which are solving the problems of geotagging, mapping these mapping images to satellites, facial recognition, self-driving cars, image enhancement, and many more. So image processing is a method to solve some op operations on an image in order to get it enhanced or to extract some useful information from it. Basically, it involves processing of two-dimensional data, which is an image, and it involves processes as image acquisition, goes to further processing, and then image reformatting, where we accept the image in an appropriate format for digital computing, and then the useful extraction of information happens using some of the algorithms, and then we reformat it for human or machine reading, storage, or documentation. So to get starting with, get started with the image processing. These are some of the frameworks which we can use, and these these are namely as OpenCV, SimpleCV, Mahotas, Accord.NET Framework, Vision Leap Features Library, and Point Cloud Library. So we will be focusing our main attention to OpenCV since it's open source and has faster uh, runtimes. Uh, however, to even begin with a basic approach, simple CV is a better option, but it lacks uh, certain features as uh, deploying your own algorithms. Uh, Mahotas is again a good library, uh, which has SIFT and SERF uh, features um, written primarily in C++. Accord.NET framework basically uses C Sharp. VLFeed is, uh, has faster runtimes for high level features as speeded up robust information, robust transformations. And a point cloud library is again, uh, open source library for certain aspects or certain uh, scenarios. Uh, this has been uh, quite uh, useful for certain applications where we have to uh, take images in 3D formattings. So apart from these, there are also cloud vision as a cloud, uh, computer vision as a cloud service, APIs available by certain, uh, so by certain companies as Google, Microsoft, and IBM. Uh, we can try each one of them. These have certain uh, pros and cons. So it's uh, using them is as easy as uh, calling a REST API. So to just uh, showcase one, uh, uh, cloud vision API by Google, gives you extraction features from an image so says that uh, number of faces it contains uh, what kind of image is this what kind of primary colors are there so these kind of classifications simple classifications can be done if you want to train your own model and deploy you can use clarify or root from engine and let's say you want to have some specific uh, requirements to detect a vehicle or to detect a number plate or uh, you can uh, use orpix vision and these are all uh, based on subscription model. So uh, you don't have, you don't get to see how the operation happens. So basically you use a subscription, you give your credit card details and uh, use an API for hundred calls and pay accordingly. So to start with the concepts of image processing. So it majorly uh, characterized by six operations. So the first one involves image enhancement. Second one is restoration, then goes coding, image analysis, 
and then uh, the part of classification comes in the picture where we do feature extraction recognition and then image understanding let's understand these all one by one so image enhancement as the picture suggests it improves the image uh, being viewed by the machine or image or the interpreter's visual system image enhancement uh, types of operation include contrast adjustment noise suppression filtration application of pseudo color edge enhancement so in the image you can see uh, this image was shot in low lighting condition and we were able to enhance that uh, with applying a uh, definite amount of contrast suppressing the noise making the image more clear image restoration is a technique which is used for removing the image degradation which which, uh, which was primarily done uh, which was primarily happened while we are clicking the image so we are able to remove the image or blur which is caused by the camera motion or out of focus imaging so some of these uh, operations can be uh, easily restored but restoration is again a very difficult and ill-conditioned problem and this and the uh, algorithm employed are quite complex and are tailored to application and hand so let's see the uh, image on the right uh, we can see the image when it was clicked it had a little blurred pitch feature so by local averaging of pixels we were able to formulate uh, the right uh, picture compared to the left one so this was just one of the algorithms which we use for uh, removing the blur effect but there are many and some of them are really very helpful but takes a lot of time to process uh, image coding which is again a very good uh, use case so uh, compression of image data uh, in a, uh, and that kind of an alternate coding is done in order to reduce storage or data transmission improvements the efficiency so various algorithms are uh, pulse code modulation differential pulse code modulation then there is predictive coding so these kind of uh, algorithms helps uh, in storing the uh, information encoded in an image and for transmission purposes as well so let's say you're taking an image at a ratio of 2.5 mb and you want to process it or you want to uh, share it from one location to another and this these kind of algorithm really helps to exchange uh, to share the image from uh, one point to another without using enough uh, without using much space and this also uh, this all helps in limiting the bandwidth required from uh, sharing for to share the images uh, image analysis uh, it, uh, it sometimes has said as the entire uh, uh, entire use case of the image processing it, it, uh, it gives uh, the estimation of various parameters or measurement from image data. In some context, it is denoted as virtually the entire field. So examples include non-destructive evaluation purposes, fitting curves to image data, radioactive uh, image mensuration. So the, here what we, so what basically it does is we apply certain uh, algorithms to understand the pixel density, what kind of image is it entirely and what the image uh, what kind of object it has so image analysis also helps primarily in object detection color identification so from the image you can see this is a normal uh, histogram uh, grayscale histogram of an image which is of no contrast and of a linear contrast we'll be seeing these operations once we go on to the tutorial sessions so next part comes feature extraction so this this is helpful in categorizing objects and an image uh, using some certain uh, pattern recognition approaches uh, so this uh, you can you can uh, see its applications in finding a tank in a battlefield scene or uh, finding number of faces in an image understanding of identifying a mutant cells mutant cell in a biological cell sample uh, there are certain algorithms for implementing which are not limited only to simple edge detections but also include uh, matched filtering and sophisticated classification algorithms image understanding so this is where we use smart sensors iot and the computer vision to understand the relationships between the objects so let's say using image analysis and under, uh, image analysis and uh, feature extraction you are able to understand yes the image uh, this is the image of our glass and uh, 
this is a table but what's the relationship between them so you basically use smart sensors and iconics which are visual phonetics which involves feature extraction and then symbolic representation that describes the object in an image or in a scene and you try to formulate uh, a kind of understanding that this this is a glass which is sitting on a table and this is a table clear position in between of the particular hall or something like that so that you were able to understand the relationship between the object this is primarily been recently uh, this has been primarily been used in self driving cars where you are able to understand the distance between the two objects so that uh, you can navigate uh, yourself through the road so after we have seen all these classifications uh, let us understand some of the features uh, which we are which we are implementing when we are transformation which we are beginning with transformation of images so a transformation of images uh, involve the image handling so that involves reading displaying and saving of an image we use uh, so since we are using open cv we use functions as cv2.imread cv2.imshow and cv2.imwrite functions so once we are reusing the function cv2.imread we use the uh, we use the tag as cv 2 read the particular tag as color the particular grayscale or unchanged so this these all respectively loads a color image where transparency is neglected which is also represented by value 1 sometime and if we are using grayscale it loads is basically converts the image to a grayscale format where uh, you see a black and white picture rather than seeing a color one and if we are using an a tag of imread underscore unchanged uh, it loads the image including only the alpha channel which uh, which can also be represented as value minus one so the uh, so let, to give an understanding of alpha channel uh, this controls the transparency or opacity of a color its value can be represented as a real value or percentage of an integer so full transparency is at zero and full opacity is at 255 a value 255 now let's see how it's done using this particular example so this is the code uh, and we will be reading this particular image In the first line, we are importing the uh, the required libraries, and then we are creating a window and naming it as image display, and we are putting it as a normal window, which can be maximized, minimized, can be narrowed down, and uh, we are displaying the image as the format. And if I press the button Escape, will uh, it will just close the window? But if I press the button S, it will save the image and it will save the image as a jpg so the image where well, the original image is in png and we are saving it in format of jpg so that is internally taken care by opencv and we need not to worry about all those so let's press the button s and here we see the new image dot jpg has been formed so after we have understood image handling let's go for understanding uh, the grayscale histogram so grayscale histogram is a representation of frequency density of image pixel values which is primarily helpful in identifying the pixel distribution in an image it basically gives a block it's, 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 it's a plot with pixel values in x-axis and corresponding number of pixels uh, in the image on y-axis it is helpful in uh, differentiating the uh, background with the foreground of the object so let's say you have an object and you would like to classify between what is the background of the image and the and classification of the object in respect to that uh, the uh, grayscale histogram helps us a lot we can use the function cv2.calchist uh, where uh, you can provide the image then the number of channels you would like to have and if there is a mask you would like to give in a particular image so suppose you would like to only calculate a histogram of a particular area in an image you need to give that particular value then the histogram size which we, which we calculate usually for full and ranges is from 0 to 255 because uh, uh, because we are putting an 8-bit uh, type 8-bit integer type uh, to understand a pixel density 
So 0 to 255 would be a value. So let's understand that as well. So for histogram, so this is the sample uh, code where we import the required packages. Uh, we will be using matplotlib for plotting the graph and be reading the image as Apple Music. We'll be importing the image and converting it to a grayscale image. And then we'll be calculating a histogram, uh, giving the grayscale image. And since we'll be not using any mask and the number of channels would be zero, um, the full, and we will be calculating the uh, full uh, histogram uh, between the values 0 to 256. And then we go ahead and plot the histogram using matplotlib, where the x number contains the number of bins and the number of pixels will be contained by the y axis. If you would like to limit the number, uh, if you would like to limit the x axis, which uh, we can do by putting an x limit, 0 to 256. And we are also trying to uh, limit the, so we'll be limiting the x axis as well as the y axis. And then we'll display the histogram. So let's see how it works. So this is our original image and our grayscale image. And let's see the histogram value. Yes. So you can see for values 0 to 256, 0 to 255, uh, this is the plot we get. And the number of pixels for values 0 to somewhere around 122, we see that the, the number of the value of that pixel is zero. That means uh, so uh, to start to, uh, to, to represent the value 0 and to represent the value 255 in a grayscale or HSV format, it represents basically if you have 0, it gives the color as black. And if you have a value 255, which, which is very much close to the color white. So we can see that there is no pixel or very, I mean, somewhere around 0 pixels uh, for the color black and the the somewhere and we are getting the color uh, the object color uh, from value 124 to 224 and we are seeing a lot of number of pixels uh, for the value 253 which is of color white so which is in our primary image so there are a lot of colors there are a lot of pixels which have value of color white so this will this histogram so let's say we want to do a thresholding we want to remove the uh, white color. We can just do a, a simple bitwise AND operation from the value 124 to 224, and we will be able to remove the color white. And and only uh, let's say we would like to add a few more colors onto the color white and change it to black. So we can do that without changing the rest of the uh, scale, without changing the rest of the pixels in an image. Uh, so, so we have already seen in, in an image, we are already seen in the particular demo that suppose this is an image and we are able to get the histogram value as this. So we can see, we can, uh, uh, we can relate that from value somewhere around 60 to value 222 consists majorly of the uh, object or foreground and the rest of the image or the rest of the pixels are for the background. So let's go for color detection and its tracking. So before we do color extra color detection, let us understand the different color models. So we already know about RGB model, which represent the colors uh, as red, green, and blue. And these three colors are combined in various proportions to obtain any color in the visible spectrum. But this uh, color, uh, this particular model, uh, doesn't take in the effect of the lighting conditions and when whenever the image was being shot what was the distance of the uh, distance of the object from the uh, camera so these things aren't being taken care of 
uh, in, in the RGB model. So we have HSV and HSL model, which says, which talks about hue, saturation, and value, which is an SSV model, or sometimes D also is represented by brightness. So see, all the colors are encoded in the form of hue, and then there is a separate uh, uh, value for saturation, and there is a separate value for the brightness. And HSL is again uh, for luminosity vector. So let's see the code to understand the color detection. First we, first, we are able to define the color ranges in HSV to find the value of a particular pixel in HSV format. We basically convert those values from uh, RBG, from BGR to HSV. Uh, so in OpenCV, the color representation is in, not in RGB, which is red, green, blue format, which is basic, uh, but it's completely reversed, which is blue, green, and red format. So we first uh, for formulate um, an, um, uh, an umpire array for the value 0, 255, and 0, which represent the value green as blue, green, and red. So, and then we are doing a color conversion for CVT color and we are converting into HSV and then we are printing that particular value for green. So, these are the values we got. So, these are the values we got and we are adding a little uh, plus and minus 10 to have a boundary of red, blue, and yellow, and green. And we'll be testing this code for this particular image. So this has very various, very, this social media uh, icons have various colors. And let's see for the color blue. Uh, for yeah, yeah. so we are doing uh, a threshold the, of the color of the HSV image, which has been already converted to HSV format, our original frame. And then we are only checking it for lower blue and upper blue values. And then we are doing a bitwise AND operation so that only those pixels are shown which has uh, those color uh, pixels like blue and upper blue and lower blue, which has between those ranges. And here is our mask, here is our resultant, and here is our frame. So we can see for the color, blue value so, so this is the only blue value it's able to uh, mask and make it as a resultant because this currently has different shade of blue similarly we can track this for the color red so let's see its operation So based on the boundary values, we are able to understand that these two um, are the <coughs> particular icons which are of red in color. It's somehow not able to detect the icon of Pinterest because it has a different shade of red and maybe we need to increase the boundary conditions. So since this is not an adaptive thresholding method, we are kind of uh, very much setting our values to a different unit. So we can again go for a loop, such loop kind of a model where we are able to understand various colors and different shades and that, um, that kind of a mapping would be a little larger to understand uh, some around 125, 128 colors. Uh, going ahead with barcode detection where we are trying to, where the complexity is a little uh, more than the color detection and histogram analysis. So, so this is the basic algorithm we use to detect barcode. So we need to understand, so to, in order to detect barcode, uh, we need to have some gradient magnitude rep representation in both the X and Y axis. So we use Sobel and Schar gradient, which basically normalizes the images. And then we subtract the Y gradient from the X gradient. So uh, if, you, if we see a barcode image, if we see a barcode in an image, uh, so let's take this image for example. If we are trying to do a normalization of a barcoded image, we would be seeing that the image would have a white, uh, a white rectangle with some black stri black stripes on it. So we'll be doing uh, x-axis 
normalization and the y-axis normalization uh, for sample thresholding an image with the color black and white respectively and then we subtract both so we'll be getting a perfect region where we will be able to see the high luminous region uh, so then we'll be uh, going ahead and doing the blur and threshold the image so that we will be removing the noise certain there are certain noise operations and uh, noise uh, might be there in an image once it was taken and we'll be blacking out all other portion and only those only that region would be uh, 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 applied to a th kernel model for thresholding where which represents or similar to represents a barcode region then we do uh, erosion and dilation for removing simple noises of small false detection like uh, since we are not giving an area kind of a model where uh, the uh, where there would be a very small area of a rectangle and large area for a rectangle uh, so we'll be removing the smaller ones putting it as a false positive and then we'll be add, adding a dilation for the compensation part and then we find the largest contour in an image which represents the maximum area and, part, and probably is the barcode and smallest possible boundary rectangle is formed around that so let's see the example code. So here we use the, uh, the necessary packages, NumPy, RParse, CV2, and system. So we are taking input from the user. So the user will provide us the image. And if the image is not provided, it will automatically take in from the webcam. So already the webcam is busy sharing the session. We will be using we'll be providing the value from the command line and then we convert the image to a grayscale then we give here star gradient magnitude representation in the x-axis which says dx equals to one and then dy equals to one in both the axis and then we subtract the gradient x from gradient y then we get the absolute value for that then we apply blur and threshold to that image and we are using binary thresholding model and then we constitute a kernel model which would find the the, uh, the particular area which is of high luminous after we, the area, particular area is formed we are doing series of erosion and dilations for four right four and that is uh, iteration four and then we are trying to find the contours in that thresholded image and we are using a simple uh, uh, a simple model for approximation model which we are only connecting the dots between the four um, rectangles so it will be like a straight line model and then if the uh, contours if the number of contours is more than zero which is at least we have found one particular uh, boundary values so that constitutes to a barcode we are able to get the uh, the particular region of the uh, the particular region of the Bar, uh, barcode and here we are sorting the contours and then making a rectangle the minimum area of the rectangle is found and then we are making a box around that and further we are drawing the bounding box around the detected barcode region and displaying the image so let's see so we'll be using this particular so let's see for this image or this image. So we'll go with the first image for the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is uh, it's able to give us the picture, and we are able to find one particular value which has the area of 90 and it's drawing a particular green rectangle around the particular barcoded region. So let's see if we want to use our image. So let's see here of this image. I hope I have got some time remaining. Similarly, uh, for this image as well, we are able to get the barcode and get a rectangle around it. So here we are able to understand that there is a barcode 
present in this image. And then we can use uh, another library, uh, Zing library, uh, Zlib library for in coding the information in the barcode to get the value as 9780521865715. Uh, so this for this image, this particular algorithm will only find the barcoded region, and then you can uh, probably just have that particular region cropped and send that to a particular uh, function which just gives which encodes this in ETF format and give, give you the particular data. So for implementing, so this has uh, certain challenges. Uh, here we are able to see that the uh, image, we, uh, we all the image were of the same uh, alignment and the same uh, representation, which is a horizontal representation. But say, let's say it was uh, uh, it was 90 degrees rotated. It, this would again needs to be changed accordingly. Accordingly, then we need to subtract the x. I subtract the x uh, uh, value with the y magnitude. So to have a robust barcode detection algorithm, we need to consider the orientation of the image. And we can also apply machine learning techniques such as Haar cascades, which is a sliding window technique, or HOG, a histogram of Gaussian, and plus linear SVM, support with two machines, to scan the image for barcoded regions, but those are um, more into machine learning and deep learning uh, uh, problems. And lastly, we see some phase detection model where we are able to detect a phase in an image or in a, in a video. So this algorithm is, uh, is simple because we already have a classifier which has been trained to detect images, which is trained to detect phase in an image. So this basically starts with reading the image and converting it to grayscale uh, because many operations in OpenCV are done in grayscale. And then there is a cascade file. Uh, then we run the cascade uh, dot face cascade dot detect multiscale function, which detects the actual faces. So this uh, the detect multiscale function is a general function that detects objects. Since we are calling it on face cascade, that's what it detects. So we can similarly, if we are using a classifier for detecting eyes, it would we need to call uh, eyes cascade or detect multiscale depending on what kind of classifier we are using. So uh, for approaching for approaching this particular problem, we use a sliding window model where we are defining a where we are defining a, a particular matrix size or the window size, and we will be sliding it through an entire image linearly line by line and once it resembles once these the pixel values resembles as a face it says that yes this is more probably a a face so so the detect multi function uh, detail, detect multi scale function uh, takes these inputs which is the first image which is the grayscale image in the first option the second input would be the scaling factor. So some faces might be very much closer to the camera. They would appear bigger than those faces which are in the back. So scale factor compensates for this, uh, which resizes the images and then uh, does uh, a detection. And then we, as I already said, the moving window approaches, the moving window approach to detect objects. So we need to define a minimum neighbor. So it tells how many objects are detected near to the current one and that cleared is as a phase. So multiple, just so detecting multiple faces in the same image is possible. And then we use minimum size where we define the size of a window as will be this. So let's see how this works. Let me them very quickly. Phase detect. So this is our, so we have stored our classifier over here. Uh, you can see that all it contains is an, uh, is an XML file which has various values and this is our code And first, we have specified the uh, classifier file, and then we are giving the file, which will be the image file. 
So we'll be giving the file for image file as this one to detect the face and we see that there are no faces detected as this folder is empty so i as so to see the code again we are using numpy r parse time computer vision open cv library and system and we are first printing the version and then uh, we'll come back to this later so in the main function we are constructing the argument parser and parse the arguments which will take classifier input and result path and if the classifier value is none then it will automatically go ahead with this value uh, of the class path cascade path similarly for the input image and the output path and once we have got the cascade file we assign it to cv2.cascade classifier giving the path and the detected image will be um, detections would be getting through cascade detect and we'll be giving the cascade as well as the image and once this cascade detect gets the both the parameters it will it will it will return the value which we get from detect multi scale function which we are putting scale factor of 1.15 minimum neighbors containing 5 and the window size will be 30 by 30 matrix and after we get that it will return uh, the detections which will return the uh, the number of detection where we are drawing the image and detections passing the image and detection so now the number of face counts can be getting and can we get from detections value where if the face counts is zero one or greater than one we perform these operations and then we print it out and we save it and then we exit that so so it has already so once we run it we have already understood it automatically understand the classifier is provided picture is provided and picture is provided but result path isn't so it will automatically understand these are the values but these are the values of the uh, vertices of a rectangle where the image is where the face is detected and the face detected in an image so the image in the folder as this so again, a while hard classicates are quite fast and obtain high accurate, uh, decent accuracy, they have two more prominent shortcomings. We have to always tweak the parameters of detect multi-scale when we are trying to detect multiple uh, faces in the image. So, suppose that you want to count the number of uh, students that are in a class using the camera, we need to always uh, tweak the parameters to have all those values. But to have to detect all those uh, students which is sometimes 30 or might be 10 and they might be very much away from the camera and these are also prone to false parties, positives with variations in the image so let's just quickly go through uh, the next uh, area of computer vision which is involving deep learning so here we have different different algorithms which is a sub uh, for deep learning uh, which is a subfield of machine learning and it only works when you have lots and lots of data Convolutional neural network, it introduces extra concepts which are connected feed forward neural networks. So here we have input layers which takes in several, several nodes in a particular image and the entire image is digitized which uh, completely, so here we have already an output layer. We already know that what we, so suppose we are trying to detect a number which is a digit eight we already know that this is the digit we are trying to detect and it will be automatically uh, processed through several algorithms so that what particular algorithm should be used to detect number eight so what are the numbers of values constituting to the value eight so a normal feed forward neural network has lots and lots of hidden layers one particular so it will have more nodes in one particular layer which there is in deep learning a neural network model where we have multiple hidden layers between 
the output layer and the input layer. And once that particular model is trained, we can use the same training set of data to detect uh, similar kind of uh, models, right, such as aeroplanes, cars, pen, banana, anything. So just to give you an understanding, uh, so an, an, an unsupervised uh, include a test image as this, and it will try to, once we have already trained our model for detecting numbers, so it will uh, use a sliding model and it will be able to understand that these, these, this image has a number eight written. This is very helpful when we have uh, human written uh, eight because we all write uh, differently or uh, originated data. And then these are the some segments where the deep learning and combination neural network is used, which is in sentiment analysis, facial recognition, video, video uh, analysis, motion detection, sound, and so certain time series analysis. So for facial recognition, we can use in image searching, machine vision, photo clustering, social media, so, so, so that um, we are able to understand the make and model of a car. And then we are also used, it is also used in telecom and handset markers. And that's it. Thank you for watching this session. Um, you can find these uh, uh, entire content. I'll be putting all the code into GitHub. And you can also use, uh, you can also see this particular uh, link when you want to install image, for, uh, uh, when you want to install OpenCV on uh, Windows 10. So this has step by steps to uh, in, import, uh, in, include a machine, OpenCV onto either your computer or, or Raspberry Pi. And, uh, I hope if you have any questions, you can shoot. Okay, so I have one uh, a question from Mr. Sieben. Uh, what useful information can we get from this histogram? So uh, histogram uh, analysis is majorly done when we want to understand, when we want to suppose classify uh, between the background, whether the background uh, maybe black and white in color and the object might be very, very small. So to give you a sample example, rather, I'll, I'll, I'll rather show it to you. So just give me a second. So if you're able to see my screen, uh, we'll go back to histogram. So suppose you have this particular uh, image where this is uh, background and you only want to perform computation on the coins rather you are you're very much less worried about the background you would only want to do computation on the picture including the coins so let's include this particular coins C -A -N -S dot G So you will be able to understand the color, different types of pixels, and the, the number of pixels which are constituting to a one particular value of color. From color detection, we are able to understand that an image can contain multiple colors, and those values are represented from value zero for black and 256 for 255 for white. So we will, and, and certain values will be again, uh, based on the color space you have used, HSV or LIB, you will be able to understand. So you can see that multiple, uh, no, there are large number of pixels for value zero. So that means the entire image has more black color images. And then after the value of 100, this, there's, there are certain regions which constitute to a value which is not black. So here you are able to differentiate between, so if you do a particular uh, demarcation of the histogram, you will be able to easily differentiate between the color black, which is the background and the foreground, which has these coins. So now if you want to do any computation or thresholding value, you know your threshold value would be somewhere around uh, after value 100 to 250. So this is very, so that, and, and suppose you want to only, you want to remove the entire color in an image from value 100 you will be only getting the values of pixels which are more than the value of black, which is 255. So histogram helps 
lot when we are to do those kinds of operations. So great, and thanks for the intro for OpenCV. Great, as uh, I was, so the time was a little very much limited. I was not able to give you an entire introduction to OpenCV, but if you are able to, I'll be sharing some of the links in the GitHub as well as in uh, my Medium blog, uh, where you can go ahead with pyimagesearch.com, which has a certain very, very good use cases for introduction into the OpenCV perspective. You would be able to understand several multi, several models uh, um, like morphological transformations, eyes uh, detecting an eye. Uh, if you see the earlier uh, presentation which I had, that has some uh, useful examples for seam carving and uh, detecting um, uh, and making or uh, detecting digits in a particular image. But since the time was low, I was not able to include this into the presentation. But you can definitely go there and look more. So I would build up, so uh, for starting with OpenCV, you can definitely uh, start by installing OpenCV into your system and uh, proceed with reading the image, and then you could proceed uh, um, based on the use cases you can program. And Mohammed Jawal, I, I, I too uh, uh, thank you for this comment uh, that you found this session interesting. Can you, um, Edmund? Thank you very much. It was amazing. Thank you. Uh, can you give uh, so Mohammed Jawad asks? Can you give us more? Can you give us more about object detection and recognition? Okay, so when you talk about object detection and recognition, so that involves having a classification model. So we that that involves training. Uh, so you need to possibly train a particular model to detect one particular image. So there are certain. Uh, uh, algorithms, LBHP, for let, let's say you want to recognize a particular face. So let's say I want to, uh, so from the model, I want to look to train some sample faces that would include face of such and that would face, uh, include the face of a different person and certain positives and negatives, which will contain, Im that would contain image of that particular person and some face, some images would contain, would contain um, random pictures, which do not have that particular image and that will build you a confidence score. So once you are training that model, you would be able to, uh, same training data you can use to detect the um, uh, another pictures which contains that particular. So, so suppose you are training a model for planes. So you need lots and lots of images for a plane and you need to understand that how would the, the plane would look like. So you need to do morphological transformation, find the contours, uh, so that it it makes a sign like this is this is this is the particular um, values in the image if and if all the images have this kind of um, structure then it's a plane and lots and lots of data would take and once you have got that model trained it so once you pass in that, so that based on training data once you run that and pass a different um, uh, image it would say that this is this has a plane in it and this does not have a plane in it so uh, based on the face detection model, it would again you would again have a classifier which will have a um, particular image of that particular face. If it is a face, it would say yes. Otherwise, it would not. It would say it is not a face. You can use sklearn for that. There are particular use cases you can find on GitHub. How can we use OpenCV for more complex image recognition? For example, detecting a certain kind of neuron from a TIFF image got from a confocal microscope. So that's again. So uh, again, you need to use. So you you can uh, just not only. So now in version three dot three, it has DNN, uh, which includes some machine learning models, and uh, using that you can do. Uh, so you need to train uh, specifically. You need to train. So let's say uh, you want to detect a certain kind of neuron. You need to train that particular model using uh, Python, sklearn. Um, and once that training data is able to get, there will be again certain algorithms involved to understand a neuron. And then uh, you need uh, multiple pictures of a neuron to do a training. And then you will be able to uh, pass a particular neuron and it will detect this is the shape of a neuron. Now, this doesn't only include the uh, operations of OpenCV, you need to also uh, take in uh, uh, SVM uh, support with the machines model, and then you need to. Uh, if you are able to do a CNN on that, it would be very much the accuracy would be even more. 
Mohammad Jawad says uh, that he wants to make an OCR for Unicode font Arabic. There isn't a perfect one. Okay, so for um, OCR, uh, you can use Tesseract APIs. So basically, you can uh, use Tesseract API. I assume that you can create your own uh, um, uh, encoding where. Uh, um, uh, it, you can give in your own language inputs as well. So currently it holds uh, multiple uh, inputs, uh, in, input languages as English um, and French and German, but I guess there would be an Arabic. And if there is none, then I think you can, you know, you'll you have to definitely create your own uh, 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 script uh, and then denote that if it is, if it has this kind of uh, structure, this part, if this uh, particular if this particular uh, image has this kind of a structure, then this particularly formulates to this um, um, particular alphabet in Arabic language. So I think that that would be where you should start with. Uh, that is uh, a Tesseract API is where I would recommend. Apart from that, I haven't worked on multiple use cases on OCR, so. Um, let me see that and uh, I hope to uh, give you a better answer. Uh, you can connect me uh, later on LinkedIn or Facebook and I'll be able to get, uh, get more information about that later. Sure, uh, you can uh, contact me on using the handle SHAC on, yeah, so you can search for this hand, uh, oh, sorry, that's not that, it's us. On Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, you can connect me with using this particular handle, and uh, or you can shoot any question, and we will be able to answer. And Sabin asks, can we aid deep learning with some hard code for a head start? Can we aid a deep learning with some hard code for a head start? Deep learning. I do not understand this question, but uh, let me, uh, if, if I understand this uh, correctly, uh, you are possibly looking for some uh, predefined code uh, to get started with deep learning. Uh, if, if I am right, there will be not many pictures. Okay, so uh, yeah, there will be not many pictures for those TIFF images. Okay, hmm. so uh, then the accuracy would go down for those TIFF images. I mean, for, the, for finding a neuron, let me see your previous ones. Yeah, so again, for that TIFF images, if there are not many pictures, uh, then obviously the accuracy would be a little less. Uh, let me see some of the examples. I'll definitely connect to you later. Uh, because uh, in when it comes for when you're asking about deep learning, you need to understand you need to understand one particular node and what kind of algorithm it you would like to uh, present with to understand. Uh, one particular neuron. So once you are able to classify one uh, one particular neuron, then similarly you can you need to train the model on multiple different kind of neurons. Uh, uh, so once you are able to do that, and if you have some uh, at least you need ten images uh, for the same neuron in the same orientation for a better classification. And once you are giving the uh, uh, so as I said, accusation. Uh, extraction and then feature detection it involves three steps so acquisition has to be very much clear once you are able to do that the extraction is where you are training the model once you are able to get confidence score of more than 80 80 percent you you can assume that for the rest of the images you will be able to detect that neuron uh, but uh, for the, the the existing code base um, there are some uh, code repositories in github I would be able to share that with you or just shoot me an email or I'll be also um, or or on any of the social media channels and I'll be able to help you with that. Uh, I will uh, be coming back to the same uh, model. I, I was working on one particular uh, problem use case um, uh, this year where I was able, where I was uh, where I developed the model for detect so just you need to take uh, your camera and scan of uh, of your mouth inside of the mouth and based on the ulcerous region in your mouth it would say it would predict whether this ulcer would go to a stage where it would get, get can cancer or not but the bottleneck which i faced was we don't have many multiple images for detecting that um, uh, re whether that will become cancer or not 
so that was one bottleneck i faced and then you need to have a solid training so uh, solid training algorithm to understand whether it will go to a cancerous region or not and that is entirely a different topic i added uh, I added to you on FB and following on Twitter as well. Thank you, Jam Muhammad Jawad, and uh, I'll be definitely helping you with that. Thanks for your kind demo. This will help us more. Sure. Definitely, Stephen. And uh, I think I was able to complete and I was able to give in more, more use cases. We so, so certain use cases more involved. So you might have heard, heard of Alipay, uh, latest uh, uh, innovation by them, which authenticates the payment just by using a face and you might be seeing uh, Apple iPhone X also uses facial recognition to unlock the phone. So definitely the, uh, the areas in computer vision are going to be a lot more be implementing in the near future as the computing power has gone uh, multiple folds and uh, we have hardware access as Raspberry Pi and the compute engine on top of it very easily available. So the only challenge we have is to understand algorithms and form our code around that. I hope this was very helpful for you all and uh, thank you for taking this session. Mm -hmm.